our calm in most states of place. Permit me, sir, to invite the chairman of the Elder Council to address your Excellency. His Royal Highness, Elder Dr. Osiya Ibino Mwana, COM. All candidates of all the political parties who contested the level November 11, 2023, Imo Congressional Election, are also enjoined by the Council to accept Imo people's values on the election in good faith in the overall interest and benefit of the state. The Council commends the candidates for their orderly and peaceful conduct during and after the election, noting that all the contestants, including the winner of the election, have no other state than Imo. The election will come and go. Brotherhood, which binds us together, must be preserved. No sacrifice is made to ensure peace, unity, stability, and progress of the most state by all stakeholders will be too much. We are all one. And members of Imo Council of Elders here are present. Way meaning and highly respected Imo sons and daughters. I will also use this opportunity to thank you once more for the sacrifice you've made, for your contributions in removing the political tension in Imo State. As a result of the conception of the Charter of Equity document. When people, when some people were surprised that who puts them a one election in the entire 27 local governments of Imo State, I told many who spoke to me that I wasn't surprised because Imo people already took a decision, and that decision went beyond political party, and religious inclinations. <laughs> Recall that the reason for the Charter of Equity, among other things, was principally to remove the acrimony, the tension, high-level insecurity, that greeted the most state, partly politically contrived and sponsored. And when we met at our level, we convinced ourselves that situations like this happened before in other neighboring states, and what actually helped in taming the tide was the understanding the power must rotate from one senatorial district to the other senatorial district. So I'm happy you are here. I will use the opportunity presented by this year's visit to inform you that our journey to the new IMO is now becoming a reality that I'm also aware that the confidence reposed on me is very huge, and I work hard to ensure that it is not betrayed. <laughs> At a point, it seems to me that there was an arrangement by some people to destroy Imo State using blackmail and propaganda. Again, the elders council rose to the occasion. That your press conference doused the tension. I must also thank you for that. Of the issue of uh, labor, I want to put it on record that my civil servants, the workers of Imo State, who have been verified and cleared, over 98% of them 
this government is not owing them any dime. If there is anything, I met backlog of salaries of judges in this state, 24 months, left behind. And I struggled to, I made sure I paid all the outstanding areas of salaries. <laughs> so Imo State government is not owing any worker. The two percent that were not paid had discrepancies. Some of them before this time were transferred from one department to another department. And they were receiving salaries from where they left and from where they went to. Some of them were not existing, never existed. And those ones were uploaded because we applied biometrics. And we gave up to nine months to every civil servant who is not receiving his or her salary to come forward. Those who came forward and made some strong cases, genuine cases, were admitted into our payroll. Today, we don't pay salaries through manual processes. We have automated our salary payment system. We have automated every government financial transaction. To the extent that you don't need to see anybody at the end of every month to get your salary. The second segment we are going to is that because now people don't refer to anybody before they get salary, the level of truancy has risen. So we are now installing clock in and clock out device that will enable government not pay those who didn't come to work. And that is what we are working on. The, 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 the sponsored antagonism between Imo State and national leadership of uh, Nigerian Labour Congress. Politically sponsored antagonism. We are already handling. The government of Imo State regrets any assault method on the president of Nigerian Labour Congress, but at the same time condemn in its entirety the attempt by the President of Nigerian Labour Congress to take the leadership of Imo State for granted. He is one of us. He is from this state, elected as President of Nigerian Labour Congress. Should it be an advantage to Imo State? I think I deserve that I should be informed, even by him, that he has been elected. Not even one visit, not even one phone call to the governor of the state. Rather, he come in here, he do nocturnal meetings with political opponents. That is not acceptable. And government must not be cowed by any non-state actor. I will not submit to that. I can never be intimidated. I represent, I represent the interests of my people. You gave me the mandate. What are you talking about? If you look at in this hall, you see the leadership of both PDP, Labour Party, and the APC. The Elders Council is non-partisan. And if you have taken decision, government in office must enforce the decision for and on behalf of Imo people.